Welcome to my channel, exploring old technologies and seeding new ideas. Let's begin. This is my first in a series of ham related videos and this one is about antenna analyzers with focus on the nano VNA. I'll start off by giving homage to the historical gold standard by MFJ which still commands a healthy price if you can find the model you want in stock and it brags a long laundry list of uses. My MFJ269 couldn't be simpler to use. With the proper adapter after discharging any static from my antenna, you just attach the PL259 coax, turn one knob to the desired band and twiddle the other knob to tune. The VSWR values appear on the digital readout. With paper and pencil you could manually make yourself a results graphic. In contrast, for significantly less money, the Nano VNA has gained popularity since 2019 and modern models can take a fairly serious run at MFJ's can-do list. The Nano VNA is closer to a lab instrument, so needs some attention to detail to use. For that effort, the Nano VNA can have a measurement plane anywhere along the transmission line as long as it's properly calibrated at that point. Unlike the MFJ, the Nano VNA is sold with SMA type connectors and comes with matching calibration tools. So different adapters are required to interface to a typical antenna's PL259 connector. Luckily, there's a wide range of adapters available. And it is easy to make PL259 calibration units. Here on top of my IC7300, the Nano VNA and the MFJ269 are ready to connect to my 4-band inverted V fan HF antenna to make some measurements. Opening my analyzer's box, we see why this model is not under $100. It has a large 4.3-inch screen, 150% bigger than cheaper units, a bigger battery, a metal box to protect the electronics and a wide operating bandwidth. Opposite the RF ports we find a type C connector for charging and sharing files with a computer as well as a 5 volt DC output jack to share its battery with other devices. It has a unique open source design shared and copied by many others. A unique feature of this Nano VNA is that the software has evolved over the years, driven by user requests, and the updates are offered free of charge on GitHub. There's a lot packed into this tiny little box. An important thing to realize is that there is an order to the testing process for the Nano VNA. First, you must establish the band stimulus. Then calibrate the unit for the connection that's expected. Repeat if there's more than one band to be tested. Then recall the band before testing the antenna. Store your measured results inside of the Nano VNA. These stored results can be used for further analysis on a PC workstation with a larger screen. And you must remember, if the connection configuration is changed in any way, you must repeat the calibration before testing again. It is important to note that the Nano VNA-F comes with a handy map that shows every possible setting and feature. This map is updated every time the developers release a new major update. So we will be following that chart to aid visual navigation through the on-screen menu system of the device. So let's begin with step one. We must tell the Nano VNA what band we are interested in measuring. This is called a stimulus and is the same as rotating the MFJ's frequency knob to the desired band. Touch the Nano VNA anywhere on the right screen side and the entry menu appears. Select stimulus and then start stop options appear. Since we're interested in a ham band, let's select the 40 meter frequencies. Input the band start frequency using the keypad and it will appear at the lower left of the Nano VNA screen when you touch the M for megahertz. 
Retouch the Nano VNA screen and input the 40 meter stop frequency and it will appear at the lower right of the Nano VNA unit. With the 40 meter band loaded, we are ready to create a calibration. As you can see, my HF and UHF antennas terminate with PL259 connectors gathering at my grounded dummy loads behind my respective transceivers. This will be the measurement plane to which I connect my antenna analyzers. For the MFJ269, there is no way to calibrate for intermediate cabling, but luckily it has a very short SO239 and N adapter, minimizing measurement errors. This contrasts with the Nano VNA, which has SMA connectors and needs a short, thin cable to connect to the respective antenna PL259s. I will try to demonstrate the Nano VNA's ability to factor out intermediate cabling characteristics from the measurement by calibrating to a distant plane. For the Nano VNA, this plane of measurement easily could be 100 feet up my antenna tower if I were to climb there and apply the terminator references at that point. Since the Nano VNA came with SMA calibration units, I chose to make my own PL259 reference sets. For that, I needed three PL259 plugs. One open circuited, a second shorted, and the third with a non-inductive resistive element as shown. With those in hand, I referred to the handy features menu map provided by the creators of my Nano VNA. The map shows the necessary navigation steps, and while yours may differ, the process should be similar. I tap my Nano VNA screen to expose the main menu. Select item 4, Calibrate, and then the next menu selection which also says Calibrate. That brings me to these choices, Open, Short, Load, Isolate, Through, Done and Back. For VSWR testing, we will cycle through these in order, skipping the fifth choice called through. This is because we are not addressing test components connected between port 1, S11, and port 2, S21. It may be the subject of a future video. After we cycle down through the top four calibration items, we select done. This brings us to the save option. Select an empty save slot for the Nano VNA to automatically store your calibration information, with a name representing the band frequencies that you set as your stimulus earlier. If you repeat this process, you could have a list of several recall calibrations available prior to testing. Now doesn't the MFJ269's manual band switch and frequency twiddler knob seem a lot easier? You have to weigh the equipment costs versus the benefits of each in your most common application. Consider the Nano VNA's benefit of providing a full band of frequencies stored from a single measurement versus repeating several individual measurements with the MFJ269 and manually storing and crudely graphing those results. Once the calibrations are done, both instruments can quickly measure VSWR in the field on your antenna. Keep in mind that this presentation does not address the strengths and weaknesses of each antenna analyzer's ability to perform the long laundry list of other test situations listed at the beginning of this video. Before proceeding to measurements, you may want to activate only the traces that you want to see to avoid too much information. I like to turn off trace number zero, which is log mag, favoring the Smith chart and the VSWR on my graphic. Here are the steps to do that. First activate the Nano VNA's menu and select display, followed by selecting trace. You would be presented with four choices and I typically disable the log mag yellow choice by double clicking on it. The first trace goes white, then I activate the blue trace below it. This is the beginning of a cycle where you click on back to move up a menu level and select format. That brings you to a place where you can select SWR to represent trace number one. 
Again, select back to repeat the process. This time to set the green trace number 2 for the Smith chart. The order again is select trace, then the green trace number 2, then back to return the format. Use that to select Smith for the Smith chart graphic. Now you have your two traces and are finally ready to proceed to making some measurements. This measurement section will present HF antenna results as well as UHF antenna results. As described, I hooked my antenna's PL259 plug via a short SMA to SO239 adapter to the Nano VNA. The adapter has been calibrated out of the measurements. Since I stored settings for all of my bands, it was easy to recall each and make readings, storing results as I went along. I later transferred those readings to my PC workstation and used an app called Nano VNA Saver to create the charts that you are about to see. There is a chart for each of the four bands on my inverted V fan and two bands on my sleeved dipole. As we proceed through the results, starting with the 40 meter band, you'll see MFJ269 readings overlaid for comparison. The graphs were generated from data collected by the Nano VNA. The top left frame shows the VSWR. The top right has the normalized impedance. The bottom left has the reactance values and the bottom right has the Smith chart. As I compare the VSWR values of the MFJ269 and the Nano VNA, they are very similar. But the Nano VNA clearly shows a lot more information about the complete band, giving more insight into what improvements or repairs might be made. For completeness, a series of 2 meter and 70 centimeter measurement results are also provided. These measurements will help conclude this limited review of what the Nano VNA can do, alongside its senior partner, the MFJ269. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll be looking forward to preparing another one for you soon.